History unfolding at the U.S. Capitol today with the January 6th Select Committee's announcement of four criminal referrals against Donald Trump. The panel arguing Trump should never be allowed to serve in a position of authority again. But in a new clip played by the committee, Trump's longtime aide and confidant, Hope Hicks, made it clear that Trump's primary goal has always been winning, to the expense of anything else. Listen to her describe a conversation she had with Trump about his claims of voter fraud. Being evidence of fraud on a scale that would have impacted the outcome of the election. And I was becoming increasingly concerned that we were damaging, um, we were damaging his legacy. Uh, say in response to what you just described. He said something along the lines of, um, you know, nobody will care about my legacy if I lose. Um, so that won't matter. Um, the only thing that matters is is winning. All right, so let's put some perspective and context on this with our team of veterans from the Watergate era, the legendary journalists Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, and the former Nixon White House counsel John Dean. Uh, John, you know, she said all he cared about was winning, and, and if he didn't win, he'd have no legacy. Of course, now he does have a, a, a legacy. Um, so what stands out to you the most from, from what she said and what we've learned today? Well, what she said is that he's going to have the wrong legacy, mm -hmm. have the legacy of a loser, and that's not a legacy he can handle. What stood out to me was the very beginning, the chairman, uh, in a passing remark, said what we're sending to the Department of Justice is a roadmap. Well, that just clicked right away because during Watergate, the, it was just the reverse. The special prosecutors sent the Congress a roadmap. Uh, mm. So I think that's the way they envision this document and this material because they've been here much longer than the Department of Justice. They've been looking at this evidence. So I'm sure they're quite familiar with where these roads go. With, with where they go, right? And all the, all the transcripts and backup uh, yes. information that they have that they haven't given to the Department of Justice yet. Uh, what, what do you think is the most important thing from what you've now seen? Uh, yeah, well, uh, there are four referrals here. And I think the one that's important uh, is the one that says uh, it is a crime to subvert a lawful function of government. And the lawful function of government is where according to the 12th Amendment of the Constitution, the President of the Senate, who in this case, Vice President Pence, mm -hmm. oversees the counting of the votes. And I think the part of the evidence that is most uh, significant legally and most reprehensible is when Trump was pressuring Pence. Here's Trump, the boss, the subordinate, and he's saying, you're not going to be my friend, you're a wimp, you're betraying us. Yeah. And uh, that, in just a normal case, with the boss putting that kind of pressure on a subordinate, is almost a crime in itself. And of course, once you, you, know, you prove one of these, uh, they, they, they each come with multiple year sentences. Uh, but, but anything would be hugely significant, I mean, <laughs> to, to state the yes, obvious. Yes, but I, I think for... People are going to have to sort this out, just like the Justice Department. What's important, what's not important, and and I think this is the one. And I, th quite hmm. frankly, think it will resonate, and it does resonate with people. I mean, what's the President of the United States talking to the Vice President? I'm not going to be your friend. We joke that it's as if Trump was saying to Pence. Yes. Next year, I'm not going to invite you to my birthday party at Mar-a-Lago. People can understand that pressure. It makes sense. And to your point, if you're going to go ahead with charges to go with what people can truly understand, as in part, this is a document to convince the public. Carl, John Eastman, uh, the lawyer, along with Donald J. Trump, is who the committee is referring for both obstruction of official proceeding and conspiracy to defraud the United States, presumably also for the insurrection and conspiracy charges, but he's in the end right. others there, if so. Uh, he has just responded saying this is yet another par partisan and political stunt. Uh, that's the first response that we have. Uh, to be expected, mm -hmm. uh, he is a principal conspirator in what today was outlined as a absolutely stunning 
cons conspiracy to uh, defraud the United States, to prevent free election of the president of the United States, to transfer of power. But one of the, you know, we started this by talking about history. And one of the things we've been asking, you know, is there another John Dean, uh, as from in Watergate, somebody who can bring the House down? And the answer is potentially yes. And we got a hint of it today, Pat Cipollone. He is the counsel to the president of the United States, who in the hearings, we could see him ham and haw as he took various privileges. However, he knows everything, absolutely everything. There is indications he, he is cooperating with the Justice Department, that mm -hmm. those privileges might not apply. Uh, so I think we better keep our eye on that substantively because it is really significant. And I will uh, just leave us on that to say the committee believes the White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, gave a particularly important account of the events. They are patting him on the back and making it clear that he was helpful.